one of the more amusing misuses of nature that pervades the history of Western thought on this subject is our endless attempt to find moral meaning in nature, to find the exemplification of principles of right conduct and living, and it just doesn't work. Nature is neither kind nor cruel. It simply is as we find it, and it's full of phenomena that are repulsive to us or joyful to us. And it must be so, because there are no inherent moral messages. My favorite example is the story of the so-called ichneumonid wasp. This is, in fact, a large group of wasps who paralyze prey, usually caterpillars, and lay their eggs directly in the body of the caterpillars, who are still alive, though paralyzed, the young are born, then eat up the caterpillar from inside, but very carefully, making sure that they save the heart and nervous system for last, because they don't want to kill the caterpillar, lest it rot and destroy their source of food. Now, there's one of the most horrible events with respect to our moral hopes, but nature doesn't care. It's merely an adaptation that's good for wasps that caterpillars haven't been able to overcome. And yet, if you look at the history of comment upon this, throughout the 19th century, various rectors and interpreters of nature for our benefit tried to find moral wisdom. They argued, for example, that we had here an excellent case of mother love. Look at the wasp caring for its progeny. Or, the argument might have been that we have to get rid of caterpillars anyway because they're such a scourge on human crops and it doesn't matter what mechanism nature uses. Or, people looked at the uh, care and husbandry of the little larvae as they kept the heart and nervous system for last is a good example of the use of resources in intelligent ways and saw that as a proper model for human agriculture and exploitation. But it just doesn't make any sense. The point is there are no moral messages in nature. Darwin understood that perfectly well and in fact used the ichneumonid wasp as a primary example of why you couldn't find them. And that's appropriate. I don't think science contains the answer to moral questions. Moral questions have to do with the way in which we ought to live our lives. Science can only tell us about the way in which the world is constructed. Now, some people think that's depressing and therefore think that Darwinism is a terrible system that we have to expunge from our schools and erase from our thoughts. But to me, it's exhilarating and challenging. I don't want to passively read the answer to great moral dilemmas in nature. I want that to be an active challenge to the humanistic side of our minds. Moral answers are something we have to construct from the depths of our own lives. We don't read them passively in nature. They're not there.